What's going on, guys? This is Boss Ross LP, and welcome to another episode, sort of, of uh, Tales of Graces. Now, this is being recorded a little bit after the last episode, which is kind of obvious. Of course, it'd be recorded after the last episode, but it was recorded after uh, the whole bullshit in the last episode with uh, fighting. What's her name? Uh, yeah, the Emerald. Emerald. There you go. I'm trying to think of the name right there. So, I'm actually solo this time because I need to go pick up some stuff. Now, we need to go into the manor to actually uh, advance the plot, but for right now, there is some stuff I wanted to do off screen, and I figured this would be a nice time to sort of just talk about some certain stuff while uh, while I'm on my own here. Uh, there's no real, you know, bad thing, but it's just like, you know. Okay, but I do need to figure out some of this stuff. Like, for example, how on earth I take off in the ship. Is it this? Yes, it is that button. Okay. So it's sort of like when you open up the map. All right. So first off, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to, not Valnick, but sort of around there. We need to go to where the Amarcian Ruins are. Um, the Amarcian Enclave. Alright, here we go. So really what we're going to be doing right now is mainly restocking ourselves on items, which is something I've been meaning to do uh, since uh, last episode. And also to find uh, the fifth, or no, no, the th fifth, the third, uh, the third of... A Pascal's Mystic Arts, so we definitely need to go pick that up. I figured that'd be important to pick up. I don't know if there's going to be four. I'm pretty sure everyone gets three, or at least two, and Pascal gets three, and Asbel probably gets three, and just specific people like that get three. I'm not certain on it. All I know is Pascal does get three Mystic Arts, so not sure how many that means for everybody else, but we're certainly going to be looking around for it. Here's the item shop. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That being said, however, uh, what I really wanted to talk about was more just what this project has turned into as of late, and it's not really very fun for Ian. I I'm getting the feeling that uh, he's uh, physically admitted that it's not exactly fun for him that much anymore, and a good part of that does stem from a one Mr. Ghost Trickster, but... Uh, Part of that also stems from the fact that the game is dragging a little bit longer than originally. Oh shit, Emil's card! <laughs> wow, look at that. Oh god damn it, Grinch is the magic that turns dreams into reality. Motherfucker. Oh, that's funny. That's, that's really funny, actually. <laughs> oh, that just makes me smile, just a little bit. Oh, uh, that, that's pretty funny. I'll give you that one. That is pretty damn funny shop sucks as terrible items but that being said however uh i do feel like it's sort of weaning on him a little bit which is kind of unfortunate because i'm really enjoying this game and i know he enjoys it too but it's just that ghost trickster has completely destroyed the experience for him so thank you for that man i i know you're not the worst human being ever but you are experience of the game and it's not like Anne's really being that much of a nuisance. Like, he isn't. He's he's been here. He's important to the to the fun. Uh, I I value him as a member of this group. That is the two of us doing this game. It's just that I I understand that you completely just don't enjoy his commentary style and all that. And while I do find that he's sort of imperative to these tales videos, I, I don't know. I mean, you're welcome to your opinion. Honestly, if it was just like me, this is probably how it would sound. It'd sound like this, and I'd be uh, a lot less, like, energized, a lot more just talking about the game in general. It'd be a lot less outgoing, a lot less forward with the fun. I mean, sure, this is a more serious style, but there'd still be a lot less of the fun, I would say. And I think Ian adds a lot of the fun to this game, so... And a lot of fun to, like, all the other projects, which is why I have him along for this. It's it's fun getting to experience Tales with him. Now, Tales of Summerphonia was never expected to really branch out to these other Tales games. It was originally just going to be, like, Tales of Symphonia 1. It was just a joke, like, Tales of Summerphonia. That's, that's all it was. It was just a joke, doing Tales of Symphonia in the summer. The thing that made it, like... Ian was joining in and on is because we both experienced Tales of Symphonia. We played it as kids. Dawn of the New World we played a little bit as kids, and this game we never played as kids. This is a blind playthrough. We are completely blind to this game. It's just that 
it's be, it's because of how we really talk and how we approach the game that is unfortunately what makes Ghost Trickster not exactly like our playstyle. If anyone else is watching and is curious as to why we keep mentioning Ghost Trickster, then I don't think anyone else is watching this. So just come out and say it uh, without comments, without words, to say it so there is no clear up, so there's no uh, no reason to clear up, there's no reason to double take. I just wanted to articulate my thoughts on what sort of Tails is to me. Because Tails, specifically here of Graces, is a game that you should probably focus a lot of your time on the story towards. That's a, a general thing you should do in games, is focus on the story. Mostly so you don't get lost. Also so you don't, uh, so you don't give the, give the whole experience a bad show, because Tales games take a lot of effort to exist. They take a lot of, uh, it's obvious they take a lot of work. Like, even the dubbing process, there's a lot that goes into each of these Tales games, and it's not to say I don't respect that, because I do. I respect the writing to an unbelievable degree. Tales Symphonia is one of the games that define my childhood for me. And I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get to experience Graces as a child, because this would have been an awesome game as well. I, I would have liked both of them, probably equally even, and my feelings on this project will be released in full on the final episode, but when we, when we get into, like, our debates, when we just talk like friends, what often happens is that we get distracted. Like, very, very, very distracted. And if you're wondering what the hell I'm doing right now, I'm looking for a fucking star. And I heard it was near the Amarsian Ruins, and I can't find it for the fuck of me. So, please excuse me while I bumble around like a dumbass, because I cannot see the star. I I'm paying attention to the screen, but I just can't find it. Like, maybe it's on the map somewhere, but I I'm sort of, like, going towards these circles. But I think the circles count as areas, so I have no idea. But... When, when we play these games, a lot of our time is diverted to just talking amongst ourselves. Because this, though Tales games are, are fun two-player games, a lot of it is very one-player-ish. It's not both of us swapping and alternating, taking turns. It's not both of us play at the same time. It's one player plays the game, and when battles happen, the second player hops in. Now, if I just wanted to sit here and talk about the game, it would bore the everlasting fuck out of Ian. And it would honestly bore the everlasting fuck out of me, too. Like, I like this game, but I can't just sit here for all that time on end and do nothing but just talk about the game. That sounds unbelievably just boring to me. It sounds like I might as well just make myself chug a convoy. And at that point, I'd focus more of my life on just, like, playing the game, and I I don't think that's what Ghost Trickster wants even. Like, he wants a blind playthrough. He wants our reactions to the game itself. He wants to see how we think about certain scenes. And while I do think we capture that, I suppose a good bit of that is, wow, what the fuck, those are weapons? What the hell are those things? Oh my god, I didn't even notice that. Uh, a good bit of that is lost on uh, translation in a way, because if you think about it, a lot of our time is spent just sitting there talking, and a lot of it is about completely random things that have little to nothing, honestly, to do with uh, Tales of Graces at times, but that's just generally the commentary style we've had for a very long time. There's some radishes, alright. But the thing is, I really wouldn't have it any other way. I'm very happy about our, uh, our style of speech that we've developed. We were pretty... Uh, we were pretty low-key back in Mario Galaxy 2. We were not very outgoing as far as uh, commentary style went. However, I felt like it's increased by quite a lot as we've gone along in time. Uh, would it be in Fendel? It wouldn't be in the research lab, would it? Nah. Would it? Maybe. I'll go take a look around the research lab, but I don't think it'll be in here. The thing is, though, uh, when we do that, if there's someone who really, really has a clear and honest passion for the game, like Ghost Trickster, who clearly has a lot of passion for this game, he really, really enjoys it, 
it comes off as we don't care about the game. And it sort of shows, like, a lack of caring for it. Like, we, we're basically just bullshitting around. Like, it, the line, Bosch also need to talk about bullshit. Sorry, talk about bullshit. That's, that's his line. And we've sort of taken that to heart because that is sort of what we do. It's, it's not, Han's not dead weight. He's not. It's just me and Ian, and we do talk about a lot of bullshit. We talk about a lot of things. That's our commentary style. The problem with that is, though, during a blind Let's Play, uh, a lot of it comes from reactions. A lot of blind Let's Plays, like, people that enjoy blind Let's Plays, a lot of what they look for is reactions to the game. They look for raw feelings, raw emotions when shit happens. And even though we do have that, we have missed tidbits of the dialogue because we've been more focused on trying to entertain as opposed to being focused on the game itself now a lot of that does drive from the fact that this is technically our first fully blind playthrough we've done together technically conquers was blind though that was only for ian i was not blind to the game at all i had watched uh tim's let's play twice by that point and I was not blind to it at all. This this is the only one we've ever done, Tales games or other, that has been totally blind. So, of course there's going to be some kinks. Of course there's going to be some not perfect... Just... Like, it's, a, it's a change. We, we had to sit there and actually think about what we were doing. We're not... We're not knowledgeable on this game, totally. We don't have perfect understanding of exactly what to do. We have to think. We have to sit down and just cut the bullshit and just pay attention to the game sometimes. Especially, especially during some of the boss battles. Like the one in the last episode that came before this. That was hard as fuck. But it was fun. It was <clears throat> it was challenging. I mean, Ian didn't love it. But, uh, man. I sort of blame that on the fact that when I was grinding off screen... I uh, started to understand the game's mechanics a little bit better, and I sort of come to the conclusion that they're really intuitive. The, me the game mechanics in battle are actually incredibly intuitive and very fun. They're a lot more fun than even Symphonia was, and Symphonia is like the best Tales games I've played so far. It's just, like, the, the control you have is so fantastic in battle, just like the alternations of right, left, up, and down, like the different combos you can pull off, like, I, I was talking about it a little bit in the last battle, like, the best combo was just to go standard, but then the final shot hitting down or up, so I went with the laser, and by doing all that in succession, uh, it was the most straight shooting, like, all the shots I shot were straight shots, as opposed to uh, being able to hit multiple enemies, it was stuff that was more intended for hitting one enemy. And that worked really well against the bitch herself. So, while, while I was discovering all that, I'm I'm still figuring out the game. I don't know if Anne's figured out perfectly yet. And a lot of that has stemmed from, stemmed from the fact that Ian only plays the game when he's over here and it's recording. I mean, it, don't, it didn't take me too long to figure out the game's mechanics, but you and play it. And a lot of the time, Ian can't do that because we're too busy going from episode to episode to episode. And there's a lot of time where he's not playing. Uh, there's a lot of time where he just has to sit there, wait through battles. And, like, the battles are crazy. When there's four people, uh, you're not paying attention too much. And, of course, we came from Tales. Or Tales of Symphonia, I mean. When we come from Tales of Symphonia, there's not a whole lot of care about what you're doing. It's a lot of button mashing. You could just button mash through an entire battle. And Ian's better at Tales of Symphonia than I am. He's a lot more skilled at the game than I am. Um, I mean, it's a lot more simple, I guess. But he's better at dodging. He's better at, like, the standard attack. He, he gets the combos down a lot better. But I feel like I'm, I'm better at Graces, which is a little bit trickier of diff, like as a game. Though I don't think we were too different until I did that whole grinding session. Then I feel like I got a lot better at the game. It's just something you have to sit down and stare at and sort of fees. Just sit there and look at it. And it's the same thing for the story. You just have to sit there and you gotta look at it. But it's like... 
we want to entertain. We want to still have the entertaining quality. Honestly, if we had just not named this a blind playthrough, it would have been perfectly fine for Ghost Trickster. He never would have found us. He never would have cared. His whole complaint is that we call it a blind playthrough and that we don't have the general nonsense that a blind playthrough would have. Like a lot of the whole, oh my god, shit, did that really just happen? Just stuff like that. Reactions. A lot of reactions. Instead, we're more focused on being entertaining. And, of course, that leads to us getting a little bit lost. And that has led to us getting a little bit uh, distracted and missing certain parts of the story. Though, e to be honest, it's not the most fantastic story in the world. I do still respect the story a lot. And, I don't know. I feel like the, the story is fine. The gameplay is good. The gameplay is great. I really do enjoy this game. It's just that, for Ghost Trickster's sake, it's not really... Uh, his forte is our commentary style. It's not... He doesn't like it. He, re he really doesn't. He finds that when we sit down, buckle down, and focus on the game is when we do our best. Like, as he's mentioned, uh, his favorite parts are when we are uh, getting stuck on bosses. Because when we do get stuck on bosses, we do have to sit down and pay attention more. And I will admit, sometimes getting stuck on a boss can be pretty fun. Like, Kurt, Kurt was a fun fight. Even Ian, Ian agrees that Kurt was a fun fight, even though he was a pain in the ass. Like, I don't think Ian liked that rod that much, but even though I called her a complete and total bitch, and I think I called her a goose at one point, I still really enjoyed that fight. Like, it was fun. It was challenging. It was a lot being thrown at me, and though it was tricky, though it was challenging, it was intuitive. It was fun. You felt like you could get her pattern down, like I was, and I would only get screwed over when she pulled out new moves or when I fucked up myself. It was sort of like, uh, as I mentioned, fighting Mike Tyson during the video. I'm like, this is like fighting fucking Mike Tyson from Punch-Out. And it really was. It really was kind of like fighting Mike Tyson from punch The pattern so much to get it to work. And it was just, it was hard. But it took a little bit of thought. It took a little bit of thought processing. But I ultimately got it. We ultimately were able to topple Imrod, and we were even able to top it with all four of our party members alive, which kind of blew my mind a little bit. I did not expect that to really happen. You know, I wonder if it's inside these snowmen, like there's going to be a star inside one of them. That would be interesting, though I don't know. Like I said, I have actually no idea where the uh, fourth star, or the third star is. Why do I keep calling it the fourth and the fifth? I just can't come up with the word third today. Ah, oh, whatever. But... The point, point I'm trying to make here out of all this is uh, to everyone, sorry if it seems like our enjoyment of the series is weaned. I don't think it has much. Like, Ian says he's annoyed and he wants to get the game over with, but I think a big part of that is just, just that he's so hyped for Sunshine. He really wants to get to Sunshine, and I, I agree with him. I would like to get this game over with and get it on to Sunshine. That doesn't mean I hate the game. It doesn't mean... It's just run its course. It's run for a little while. And we feel like we don't want to spend forever on it. I mean... I probably have it a lot less than Ian does, considering the long projects I've done in the past. Fallout 3 took a year and a half to do. Or more. I don't remember. It was like two years at that point. Skyrim has taken almost a year now. Uh... This, this game has taken since, like, before summer, so it's not going to reach a year, definitely not. We're definitely going to get it finished relatively soon, but it's it's certainly taken its time. And even games like Dawn of the New World that took a while, Tales of Symphonia 1 took a while, like, a lot of these long, long games, and they're they're taking a while, and it sort of it sort of drags after a while, like, you get into that late game drag and this is a game that can sort of pull that out so bottom line is we don't hate the game but we we want to continue our commentary style as is we want to focus on the game because i, I especially do because i want to owe it to this game i want to say to this game right now that i do enjoy it I do really enjoy this game, and even the story, as campy as it can be sometimes, it's a fun story, and I really do enjoy this game. That's all good. Me and Anne both enjoy this game. I can vouch for that. 
Like, even if it sounds like he's annoyed, I can vouch that we both do enjoy this game. But, we want to enjoy it in such a way that is both faithful to... Both faithful to it. To not sounding like we're jackasses. They're just like, <laughs> play the game, play the game. Like, we're fucking idiots. We, we want to we wanna be smart about it. We want to enjoy the game, but we also... We want to be a little stupid. We want to be just a little bit stupid. Because that's our mainstay. That's who we are. Me and Anne are stupid people. And we we don't want the the playthrough to be stupid. We don't want it to be a waste of time. We don't want it to be something that people are going to get annoyed about. Not that. But we want to... We want to make it fun for people. We want to make people enjoy it. It That's important to me. I want people to enjoy this playthrough. Because what this is, is me and Anne hanging out. Like, a lot of times when Ian comes to hang out now, it's recording. That's what we've sort of evolved hanging out into. So, I want to make sure it's enjoyable. I want to make sure that we have fun, and we make sure we have a playthrough that's fun for everybody. Like, I know you can't please everybody, you really can't, and I'm sort of trying to please everyone right now, but I want to do it in such a way where... Well, what the fuck is the save point? I want to do it in such a way where... Everyone can reasonably enjoy it without f fully annoying people. Like, yeah, we're going to be stupid. Yeah, we're going to miss some stuff. But we're going to try our damnedest not to miss anything. That, wait, this is a chocolate fountain? There's something we missed. What the fuck? That, that was probably a point, I know. But that's a shitty looking chocolate fountain. Ew, that's gross. We want to make a situation where this game can be enjoyed and we we cannot come off as annoying to everybody and to do that we are going to have to pay attention which we have been doing we've been paying attention to the story but we still go off on stupid tangents like that whole last episode we were talking about the erectile like puzzle I, i'm thinking about calling that episode uh erectile function i think that would be a funny name like we're, we're still gonna have stupid moments like that and I don't know if Ghost Trickster hates that. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Really, what sounds like it's annoying is when we talk over the cutscenes, which we're going to keep doing a little bit. We're going to try and be not as annoying about that. I know it's pretty late saying that now, and I think we have already done that, which is sort of why I wish I didn't go for spoilers right now and sort of was able to post this right now, but I sort of couldn't have a way to do that without spoiling shit, so... Yeah, right now, uh, it's sort of late in the project to be saying this, but at least this is probably going to be how it is. Uh, we are we're going to try to both enjoy this game and make it enjoyable for everybody. So, hopefully you guys are able to enjoy this, and hopefully we are able to enjoy this as well, without being annoying to anybody. Because that's, that's all we want. I mean, it's still going to be stupid at points, like, but all playthroughs go through that. Like, find one playthrough where there isn't just, like, a stupid moment. There's no perfect playthrough that anyone has ever done. There's no perfect playthrough. Does not exist. Does not compute. Someone fucks up saying a sentence. Someone messes up going in the wrong direction. Even Chugga Conroy. He did the, probably the best Xenoblade Chronicles LP that will ever exist. Yet he still messed up at times. He still died. He still got lost. He still made mistakes. He is not perfect. And even though he did a relatively really good LP, it's not perfect. And we're not trying to be perfect. We're trying to be fun. We're trying to give fun. And we're trying to respect this game as much as we can. Becoming monotone losers who just sit there and be like... Wow, that just happened. Or try to oversell our emotions. Like, I'm not. I'm not trying to be like, not to diss either. But PewDiePie, Nova. We're not trying to be those two. I know that's their style. I know that people like that. I like Nova, but we're not trying to really explode. Like the Pokemon, we're not trying to be explode with our emotions. We're not trying to be that. We're trying to be like, oh wow, that happened. We're trying to call some of the twists, but we're trying to be normal human beings. We're trying to be ourselves, hanging out, without uh, 
while giving fun to everyone that watches. Even if some people don't like it, we can't be... Can't please everybody, but... We're trying to make it... Work. I'm just rambling at this point. I'm going back and forth. So... Post in the comments, after you watch the whole video... Any questions, any comments, all that shit. Hello, cannot find file, Windows script host. You were here to tell me I'm rambling. Uh, see you guys for the next session of Tales of Graces. Hope you guys are there for it. I will probably find Pascal's Third Mystic Art off screen or just look up a video on it. Something like that.